Family, what's good? Welcome back to the Living the Wire podcast with me, Delaney. I'm your host, and we are back with another great episode of the show. Um, today's episode titled it "Light Work" because it's light work. It's uh, you know, it's just gonna be something real smooth. Like uh, I'm gonna be going through just to check in on where I am regarding my goal of the month. Um, and you know, Kendrick Lamar dropped uh, a single last week, The Heart Part 5, and his album, it more than likely would be dropping the same time that this uh, uh, the podcast episode is dropping as well. So I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the song and, you know, his a uh, couple of his uh, his albums, and I ranked them uh, my, in my order of my uh, least favorite to favorite. So I'll go through that. And then uh, it's playoff time. So, you know, my time has really been watching more basketball than normal. Uh, so I'm going to go through just my remain- my predictions for the remainder of the playoffs. And then we're going to hit you with the audio book of the week. And then we're going to keep it moving, player. You feel me? Hope you all are having a really good week out here, uh, here in Chicago. Um, it is starting to get summer weather. It's about to be summertime shy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm. I really want to get out here, but you also, also COVID still out here, y'all. So please make sure that the mask mandate may not be in place, but just keep your mask on, keep it with you. You know what I mean? Just still like be somewhat responsible, bro. We're not out of the woods yet, but like, come on, man, please. That's, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm trying to have a, uh, you know, a summer of turn up, you know, so or, I don't even know if that's what they're saying these days. It doesn't really matter, but I'm really, I'm trying to be out here. You feel me? So like, help me out. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get into uh, the goal for the month. As you all remember, uh, my goal for this month was to uh, reduce my body fat and my uh, BMI percentage, my, so was my body mass index percentage uh, by two percentage points. So I've been, you know, uh, I wrote down basically, I did a check in of where I've been and where I am now. And um, from that, I just wrote a few positives and a few negatives of the things that I have been doing. So I have been working out at least four times a week. So, and I've been keeping record of that through my activity app through Apple and my Apple Watch. So, I record all my, well, I I take pictures of my uh, workouts. I record some of it. I don't record a lot of it because I, you know, sometimes I'm just like really in the zone with it. But, like, I have at least tried to record a little bit while I'm there um, just to, you know, get myself more used to like recording and, and doing all of that and getting, you know, being that part of the routine um and i've taken pictures and logged all of the food that i've eaten um over the past like week and a half so i make sure that i at least like i log them through uh this app called noom n-o-o-m and i was referred that one because it was like more of an intermittent fasting type app so i log on my food through there trying to watch my calories and see if I, you know, you know, fall into like a caloric, uh, density rate, uh, things like that, trying to, you know, you know, be conscious of that. So I've been taking pictures of that and that helps. Um, I did weigh myself and I'm in the mornings. I'm probably starting at like, like last week, I think I was, I said I was at like 295. So in the mornings, if I'm good and I just wake up, I'm probably coming in at like 289, 290, somewhere like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, just trying to get more focused on, you know, or diligent, continue to stay diligent with like taking pictures of my meals. And that actually helps because now I'm focusing on finishing my meal prep. So I've made my meal preps and I've, I've eaten them, you know, so that's really good because my food hasn't gone to waste and I'm sticking to it. Um, so those have been like some big positives. Uh, I've, I've probably, you know, dropped, like I said, that's maybe about like four or five pounds. Um, 
within that time frame just kind of sticking with it um but a few struggles is that man like i want to work you know sometimes it's just like you just want a nice juicy burger you know ain't nothing wrong with that every once in a while you know what i'm saying nice slice of pizza and i haven't had pizza in a very long time because i haven't had dairy but i've been craving a pizza for the longest so that's probably going to be the just like one of those things that i'll give myself uh pretty soon my birthday's coming up and i got a trip coming up so i'm pretty excited about that and um maybe i'll give myself then to really celebrate on it so that's like one of the struggles and the other one i would just say is really just like posting you know my updates i know that i said i was going to uh post more of my updates but that kind of gets into you know the 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 audiobook of the week and i'll probably talk more about that on another podcast episode but like just just the social media aspect for me um you know i know how to use social media uh i try to regulate how much social media i use on my personal time but i know how impactful it is you know just for a brand presence and things like that so it's like uh, uh an area where i'm still growing myself so i have been at least po- you know like recording stuff and updating content posts and creating things like that so i'm building a consistency there so i think i will put together a compilation of like just the the videos and the foods that i've eaten maybe throughout the week maybe a weekly update would probably be better for me something like that whatever but i were to get that content out there because you know if anything like i said it helps you if you're you know if you're chugging along with me you know what i'm saying and i appreciate it you know if you are whatever goal you have planned or whatever you got set for yourself you know let's let's get it let's take care of it together so uh i'm gonna work on that but that's pretty much where i'm at with uh, the goal of the month and i'm feeling pretty good i haven't measured myself yet i'll probably wait for like maybe another week or just wait until today's with the 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 13th or the 12th as i record this so it's been 12 12 days in so if anything maybe i'll do it on the 16th or something like that just to kind of see where i'm at but like i feel good i feel leaner you know uh um uh the routine is building so i'm feeling pretty good and feeling present about that so um yeah so let's you know i'll keep you updated on where we are in the next week and then you let me know how you're going have you been recording how you wanted to track your goal or how you want to attack it and how does that make you feel now that you're you know a weekend you know let me know what you think share your progress with you know so um anyway moving forward getting into um which you know the, of course Mr. Kendrick Lamar coming in and just shutting it down you know my man be on hiatus for like what 2017 is when damn came out so what five years five six years or so and my man will just go and be like look I'm gonna give you all this fire boom you sit with it and then I'm gone right and so now he's getting ready to get some new fire coming out uh like i said it drops the same day that the podcast will drop by the 13th uh mr morale and the big steppers i purposely have not read any review or not any reviews but any hype um hype blogs or like anything about what the albums are supposed to be or anything like that any predictions but like for me, I don't know what it is. I, I, I think they, I did hear that it may be a, a, a double disc. And if that's the case, if it's a double disc, I think that collab, the big steppers, I feel like it's that J. Cole collab. That's just me. That's just me. They've been talking about this for like 10, 15 years or however long, but it's like, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's going to be fire. And leading up to uh, the album dropping tomorrow, uh, Kida dropped uh, The Heart Part 5, which is like an installation of uh, the singles that he's dropped over the years titled The Heart. And this is The Heart Part 5. And uh, man, it's phenomenal. It's, it's a really dope song in it. Um, 
he's really talking about a lot about well from different perspectives but mostly from the perspective of how we view the culture and what that actually means and like how in that culture there's so much like there's so many things that we've been instilled that are so harmful that like we just chalk it up as like oh this that's the culture oh oh you know what i'm saying i'm ride or die i'm doing whatever blah 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 i get locked up and my girl i mean my homie go over and smash my girl as soon as i get locked up that's the, that's the culture you know what i'm saying like you know oh he always just gonna be that way that's just me that's that's the culture you know what i mean like he talks and he alludes to all of that where hurt people hurt people that's the culture you know what i mean and if that's the culture i don't want to be a part of the culture fuck the culture like is powerful in a lot of those statements that he makes because it's like it 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 it, it goes along with everything he's always said like you know in order for us to like really try to like change for the better in regards to getting what we want as like black people we need to have these conversations where we're looking at things that like really like contradict how we move you know and we talk it up to oh we always just gonna be this way well we always gonna be this way because we don't challenge on how we can change and be better you know like i don't know i but it's fire and then the last verse is all from nipsey's perspective and it couldn't have been more beautiful or poetic you know what i mean just and the deep fakes from the video if you haven't seen the video on youtube is fantastic because he, he deep fakes into oj simpson um uh, uh, Jesse Smollett, Kobe Bryant, Will Smith, and then Nipsey Hussle, and all of these people are, you know, figures in within the culture, both positive and negative. But you know, they're representative of our culture, and it's just a, it's it, it's thought provoking. If it doesn't at least sit with you with some sort of way to get you thinking about just I don't know how just how we view things or how you know how things are set up in our culture to kind of not always to tear us down because our culture is fantastic it's fabulous you know what i mean like we i I love it because we know how to turn nothing into something and it's been proven over time that we turn nothing into something and and then it gets stolen right or it doesn't get recognized but nevertheless the hard part five is is dope uh i'm sure the morale and uh mr morale and the big stepper is gonna be another fire joint um and with that being said i went ahead and ranked my top five kendrick lamar albums all right y'all now this ad is brought to you by crazy jay's kitchen and it's strictly for my Detroit family out there, right? So next time lunchtime rolls around and you're swamped at work and you really can't get out, um, hit up Crazy Jay's Kitchen. They get they have the best burrito tacos in the city, period, hands down, bar none. I don't care who you can go to Mexican town, whatever. My man is killing it, okay? Chef Chuck is ah. Okay, the burrito tacos that he has is fire. I've seen him actually put to, put it together. And he, when 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 people said that they make the sauce from scratch, sometimes they cap. This dude actually makes his sauce from scratch every time, and every time it is extremely fire. But don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Again, my Detroit family, you're looking for some burrito tacos, hit up Crazy Jay's Kitchen. Make sure you follow him on Instagram at Crazy Jay's Kitchen. That's C R A Z Y J A Y S K I T C H E N. Crazy Jay's Kitchen. He delivers. So follow him on Instagram for his menu and also uh, store updates as well. So check him out. Let him know that I sent you there too to try out those burrito tacos and see what you think about it. But now let's get back into the show. All right, and we are back. And so I have uh, my top five Kendrick Lamar ranked albums since he's getting ready to drop uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. 
I figured I'd go ahead and uh, go through my top five ranked albums. Usually when like one of my favorite artists are starting to uh, come out, I'll go in and I'll listen to their discography again and kind of get familiar and reminiscent of their music or how their flows are just like the type of level of like music or like the intellect that I may be getting from the artists at the time. So going through this, I went through a lot of the, the old stuff that uh, K-Dot has and was just still in marvel by a lot of like of what he talks about and just how he flows man is is wild so coming in at number five is i think this is technically still a mixtape um but it's overly dedicated and on this one i didn't really it was all right like it wasn't like my first inter uh, like my introduction to kendrick lamar uh i heard some newer stuff and then went back and heard this one and i was like it's okay i mean i heard it for a while my favorite song on there is pmp 1.5 so i'm going through something in like you know what i mean that's the joint so that's my favorite song on there and then uh the song alien girl that was a weird song i thought it was just kind of it was kind of blah so um number five would be overly dedicated <clears throat> and uh number four Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, this uh, this was the first album of his. It still wasn't his my first time hearing him, but this album when it came out, his I think was like his first commercial album, I'll say. Uh, but like this one was the first one that I heard and I listened through like from beginning to end, right? And it just had me hooked. It was the story. It was you know just the flows and how like the whole album came together and it just talked about him hanging out with his boys and then them eventually like getting into some stuff and then his brother you know homeboy's brother getting shot and then he gets saved like it's a whole wild story you know and so i appreciated that the whole thing i love that um my favorite song will probably be money trees um <clears throat> j-rock came in and killed the end part of it you know so i really love that song compton was probably my least favorite song on the album and i think that was like more after the outro or whatever you not to dre rapping is like you just know you hear whoever he like you hear whoever wrote for him and when he raps like oh i heard oh that's eminem oh oh okay kendrick wrote that one for you oh okay uh whoever else Anderson may have wrote that for you or who you know what I mean like I hear them when he raps like get you I respect you bro but you know relax anyway so uh overly dedicated five good kid mad city coming in at four number three uh section 80 for me that was just a banger that one had just a lot of different cuts on there where it was just like it was still raw Kendrick and it was just still like I'ma tell you some stuff Keisha song, Tammy song you know what I mean uh, my favorite song, Po Man Dreams uh, with GLC Cushion Corinthians um, you know it was just a lot of bangers on the rigor mortis oh uh, man, ADHD like it was just a lot of just hits after hits after hits and that's like uh, I think that's the one that's technically his first album. And it was just like so many bangers on it. Uh, and then I think the worst song for me was probably the, little, the No Makeup song. That song was just kind of blah. But I mean, it still had a lot of other hits on it. So Section 80, I think, would be third on my list. And, uh, number two, <clears throat> it's probably number one to a lot of people, but Damn is number two to me. Um, when it came out, I think it was, came out at like a, a, the right time. Um, it was just another one of those like Kendrick releases where it's like I'm just gonna stop everything and have you listen to me and listen to what I'm talking about uh, I love how all of the song titles are all one name you know one uh, one word song titles um, there's still a story there's a whole thing about listening to it backwards you got Duckworth where the whole song talks about how uh, Top Dog was supposed to uh, rob the KFC where Kendrick's dad worked at and if he would have killed Kendrick's dad then it wouldn't be Kendrick Lamar and like 
talking about all the different uh you know all the different seven deadly sins and you know things like that it was it's a masterpiece i mean i think bro won a pull surprise which is wow you know what i'm saying so for me i think my favorite song on that one is element and the worst song is probably love if i had to pick a song it would be probably be that one and then my uh so number five overly dedicated good kid mad city section 80 damn and then my favorite album is to pimp a butterfly the pimp a butterfly was just so dope because man i don't know he said some stuff on to pimp a butterfly that like was just it truly stuck with me you know um the first time i heard <clears throat> i think it was uh i think it was you the first time i heard you was just wow because it was just a, a, a place of like Kendrick really showing a level of vulnerability of like really talking about like survivor's guilt and talking about like you know truly like not being there for you know the people who he grew up around and you know like how he views himself and was just like how dark it can get you know and what he tells himself and it was just you know, it was really, really like intimate in that, you know, or in a way of just where it was like he was willing to to show that or provide that. And it really, you know, it hits, it slaps, you know what I'm saying? So like um I love that album. All right, I think is my favorite song on that album because it's just like it it it, it was an anthem at the time, you know, and then especially it, you know, it came back again and you know after the George Floyd passing and you know it's just like one of those things it's like man you know we gonna be all right <laughs> like legit you know what I'm saying like right now we may be we may be down it don't matter like we're gonna be all right we're gonna take care of ourselves we're gonna get ourselves out of this you know what i'm saying we already know like it's already set up against us it don't matter like we're gonna be all right and it's it's a it's a powerful song man it's a great feeling you know um so that's my favorite song on that one and these walls probably was the worst one so to pimp a butterfly is my favorite Kendrick Lamar album thus far. Let's see what he does with this uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper. So I'll, I'm pumped to hear it. You know, let me know what you think about the album's rank. Um, well, let me know what you think about what's your favorite Kendrick Lamar album or your verse or whatever it is. Let me know what you think about that. So um, before we go ahead and get out of here, wrap this up. This is one of my favorite times of the year, even though it's a slow season, football season-wise, but we're now in the NBA playoffs, uh, and we're in the thick of it, you know? So right now, as we speak, it is the uh, the uh, conference semifinals. So we got um, currently in the East, it's Miami, Miami Heat, and uh, Philadelphia 76ers and Miami is up in the series three games to two on uh, Philly and you got Boston and the Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks against the Boston Celtics Milwaukee is up on them 3-2 the West you got Golden State and the Grizzlies Golden State's up 3-2 and then you have Phoenix up on Dallas 3-2 as well and I think kind of like where we are in these series, we're just kind of going back around with Miami up 3-2 on Philly. I feel like they should just go ahead and be able to close this out because Philly is too inconsistent. Excuse my dog. But Philly is too inconsistent where like Embiid is always giving it his all because like he really wants it, but he's some way or another he's hurt you know but you know give him credit he's playing through it i mean he had that orbital bone fracture he had a concussion and 
you know, he came back and they won two games straight, I think it was, uh, when he came back in the mask. But James Harden, man, is like, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, unpopular opinion, but I never really saw James Harden more talented than just like dribble, 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 go to the hole, get out. You know what I mean? Oh, make a make a three every once in a while. Go to the hole, get foul. I, I never saw anything past that. So he's lost a step in my opinion. And then so without James Harden, you got a bunch of other like two tier p- players. Like you know, Miami is is defensive minded. So they're just gonna basically if they stop Joel Embiid, who else are they gonna get to to, to score at this point? You know. So I expect Philly to uh, go ahead and take this L and Miami to close it out for them. The Boston and the Milwaukee series is the more interesting one, in my opinion, because, I mean, Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown, those boys are really out here, like, killing. You know what I mean? They are holding it down for uh, for Boston right now. You got those two. You got Grant Williams giving them great minutes. You got, um, <clears throat> I know Patrick Williams. I think he was, is, this, is that his name? Is that, that that kid in Chicago? I don't know, but the, I can't think of his name, but they're all kids to me now at this point, my ripe age of 31. But they got, you know, they still have players that are like putting it together and, you know, uh, they're very defensive minded. And Jason Tatum, man, like his shot his shot like he's gonna be very special for a very a very long time so um you got them but then you got Giannis Giannis man I love the fact that Giannis is just like taking over the NBA and he's making people pronounce his name correctly by his play you can't mispronounce Giannis Antetokounmpo you know how to say his name because he's a household name at this point. He's the best player in basketball right now, you know. Um, and he it's like he puts the team on his back, but he still has great pieces, great defensive minded team. Um, they're a championship caliber team. So that's like they know what to do and they know how to perform. And Giannis is hungry still. You can just see it in how dominant his play is. It's such a great series, man. It's been coming down to the wire in the last couple, I believe. So with this, um, Milwaukee actually had to come back and uh, steal a win in Boston. And this last one uh, to go back home to Milwaukee uh, to potentially close it out. Uh, With that being such a tough series, man, I... I'm, I still say I'm, I'm going to say Milwaukee go ahead and close it out um, in this game next week or not next week. Yeah, I don't know when this next game is, but they're going back to Milwaukee and I expect them to close it out. So I expect it to be Phil, I'm sorry, Miami and Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals and then Golden State and uh, Memphis. Even though they literally just got ran out of the gym, Golden State did by like I think by at one time they were losing by like 55 points, which is ridiculous. Um, but they packed it in, man. They had like like 12 plus turnovers in the first half. Um, they just weren't there. So I think it was just one of those games where they was just like, uh, you know, everything that can happen that can happen bad or will happen or whatever like that. They just took it off. But uh, Memphis with no John Morant. Um, I don't see Golden State having another game like that, so I expect them to go ahead and close that one out. And the Phoenix Dallas series, um, Phoenix is gonna go ahead and wrap that one up. Uh, Lucas, cool, you know, he's but it's just him there, in my opinion. And I think that he still needs somebody that's gonna help take away some pressure off of him. Uh, they've got pieces there, but I think they still need like a consistent two there for Luca. Um, but Phoenix is Phoenix is knock on wood finally getting healthy with you know Booker getting past his hammy. 
you know, Chris Paul, hopefully knock on wood, you know, no playoff injury jinx for him. Um, DeAndre Aiden is playing well and playing together with them. So um, they got a good nucleus, man. So they should, I should expect them to close it out against, um, against Dallas. They're up 3-2 against Dallas. So I expect them to go ahead and close this one out. They play tonight as well. So that leaves me with basically coming out of the West, Golden State and Phoenix. So Golden State and Phoenix and the Bucks against the Heat. Um, in the East, man, that's just two defensive teams again, man. It's going to be the whoever can score 110, whoever can score 110 points consistently will win that series. And if I look at it like that, oof. Bucks and six. Bucks and six. Bucks and six against Miami. And Golden State and Phoenix. That's going to be a tough one, too. Oof. Um, Golden State is so small, man. Like, ugh. I'm going to say, ooh, man. I had originally wrote Golden State in seven. I think I'm going to change that to Phoenix in six. Ooh, Phoenix in six. I ch- wow. Yeah, Phoenix in six. I'm going to go with that. So I got Phoenix and Milwaukee, a rematch from last year. Um, man, can they get past, can they get past Giannis? I don't know, man. Giannis is just a beast, bro. He, he's so hungry, man. And if Middleton comes back, they're, they're just, it'll just be like a full rematch from last year. Last year, I think they won in five games. Bucks won in five games, I think it was. I think this year, uh, and I think Chris Paul got hurt. So I'm going to say this year. Bucks and six. I wanted to say Phoenix, but I don't know why. It it just didn't leave my mouth. I couldn't. So I'm going to say Bucks and six. So I got the Milwaukee Bucks going ahead and going back to back. Um, Giannis again showing his dominance so uh, I like to see how this heads and you know let me know what you think and where you you know how where you lean in with the playoffs you see anybody any underdogs left you think any of these teams can pull an upset you think Philly can come back I mean who knows let me know what you think about that though um, so we'll keep in mind for that I said uh, I said Phoenix yeah I said Phoenix so, no, I said Bucks. Bucks and six. See how I forget? So now I got to record it. So I know I said Bucks and six uh, to win the NBA championship 2022. Audio book of the week. Um, if you got the chance to check out last week's book, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, um, that's a good one. Like I said, it really just gives you a lot of perspective on some of the different consistencies or the outliers that some of the more successful people may take in order to achieve success or sustain success so check out that book uh outliers this week um and um i'll probably talk more about it uh referencing material for next week episode uh this one is going to be digital minimalist uh by cal newport um i like this book because i uh, listened to it um, and it gave me a lot of insight about how to revamp on how I use social media uh, and how I view social media and how it can be a pe- like how social media uh, can really impact your mindset it can impact your mood it can impact your way of thinking and things like that and how you can you know do different things to kind of you know break away from that cycle and you know not to you know discredit social media by any 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 means or any stretch but it it just helps you with regulating how you use it and how often you um it's a really great listen um i recommend it um it's on of course apple books or um and maybe in audible books um but check it out um let me know what you think about it and of course 
I want to thank you all for uh, kicking it with me every week, listening to what I got to say. Um, you know, just the consistent support. Right now, this is episode nine. I'm at, I don't know, 16 subscribers. So all 16 subscribers on YouTube, I appreciate you. If you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, I don't know those stats yet, but I appreciate you listening. I uh, appreciate you checking in, shooting in me in the DMs, commenting. I love it all. I appreciate you all. Let me know if you want to hear something next. Um, but yeah, so until next week, uh, you know, just keep moving forward. As I tell you, keep moving forward. Peace. Love y'all.